Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Before I begin, like the video, put on your notification bell so that you can know when my up next video uploads. And if you like the video, come down in the comment section. Also, I'm going to need y'all to subscribe too, okay? Don't forget to subscribe, y'all. Before we begin, let me give this quick disclaimer. All things are, in my opinion, alleged and for entertainment purposes only. Hey everybody, welcome to my review of Growing Up Hip Hop Season 7. So we open up with Rihanna. She's rehearsing with her band. Sequoia comes in and they talk about performing at the 59th hip hop or the 50th hip hop anniversary. Sequoia says she's not sure if she's going to perform because of the tension between her, her mom, and Lazy Bone. Is it Lazy Bone or Busy Bone? Lazy Bone, I think it is. Brianna says she's throwing an all girls event and plans to invite Cree, although she thinks she's unstable. Brianna says she's trying to be a nice person because she wants to get into heaven. Shakoya feels a way about Cree talking about her dad. She feels Cree say things that are out of line, especially since they are not close. Then we have JoJo, who's in a meeting with Three is Four Company. It's a branding company and content company. He is one of the co-founders. Um, he said it, the company covers a lot of cannabis stuff, but... Their focus is on storytelling and telling messages and educating people about cannabis. He said he wants to talk about marijuana being stigmatized for so long and about the people that are in jail for the marijuana distribution. And I would love to see that because it's not fair. People making money off him. People done did some bids <clears throat> for these marijuana distribution charges. Um, he said he he's talking about moving to L.A., to do the business because, you know, marijuana is not legal in New York. So he said he's looking at houses, but he did not tell his wife. Uh, you know that's a no-no. You can't do ha handle such a big transaction without telling your wife. Like, come on, JoJo. So we got Eric Busybone. I'm sorry. See, I keep saying Busybone. It's Lazy Bone and Sam. They're in the studio. Sam decides he's going to stay behind the scenes because people are not feeling his performance. <clears throat> excuse me y'all I have to agree like you're weird anyway Bone and Eric agreed that he would be a good stay at home producer writer like I felt like that was shade when he said that but when um Sam finished his song playing his song for them they was like yeah that's good that's good so Bone talks about the 50th year anniversary and would like Sam to do something but don't know where him and Treach are at so I guess Bone, Lazy Bone don't want to cause no friction within the anniversary celebration because Tretch is not feeling Sam at this moment, okay? They talk about Sam's case and of him carrying the pow-pow and weed. Like, what was you thinking, Sam? And from my understanding, Egypt was with you at the time? Like, what was you thinking? Like, I, youth makes you feel invincible, but you feeling it now, I'm sure. So Sam's lets them know that um, he's going to start a snow cone truck and Eric... And his conventional said he don't think that's a good idea right now. Now, he ain't really explained why it wasn't a good idea, but maybe it's because he about to do some time, you know, but I don't know. He didn't really explain it. So, JoJo and Eric, they go to a house showing. The house is really nice, I have to say. Like, from the outside, it didn't meet the inside. The inside looked really nice. So, JoJo wants to put an offer in. We learned that they have been looking for homes in New York or the East Coast, but you know, kept losing the, losing the offers. Like, the housing market is crazy since the pandemic. Like, you could put your bid in and somebody outbid you, you lose the house. Anyway, he wants Tanise to be happy. He has a cool idea to surprise her and bring Tanise and the kids over to the house. And Tanisa be like, whose house is this? And he'll say, it's our house, <laughs> uh, JoJo's house, he started joking. And it's cute and all, but that's a big financial responsibility and your wife should be included in the decision. So Vanessa and Cree meet up for lunch. Um, Cree is running late. Um, when she gets there, they briefly talk about Vanessa's surgery. Vanessa stands up to show her stomach, which is still wrapped up. So I don't know why you keep trying to show people your stomach and your stomach is wrapped up. I don't understand that. But anyway, when I say they talked about her stomach briefly, they talked about her stomach briefly. So, so they get to talking about the skate party. And Cree said Brianna's words were slurring. And I'm like, girl, that's a reach. Brianna's words was not slurring. Her words was clear as day. Like, I don't like people who try to put stuff on people that ain't true. 
Like, it's on camera. People can see it. So why would you say that? But anyway, <clears throat> Cree talked about the things that she's going through that nobody knows about, that she's going through a lot of deaths in her family. She said her great-grandmother is not wanting to fight cancer anymore. And she said she is going to go get to see a therapist, which is a great thing. And I feel like everybody needs to go see a therapist when they mourn it because you go through so many different stages of, you know, people going through death. Um, <clears throat> and another thing I wanted to say was, Cree, if you open up to the people, maybe they can understand what you're going through. Like, you're on a reality TV show. This is the part that I don't understand about the people that's on a reality TV show. You're a part of an ensemble cast. Like, you don't got to share with everybody, but put it out there what you're going through so you won't look like the mean girl. Because you're coming off as the mean girl who needs a storyline. That's just in my opinion, Okay. Anyway, Vanessa invites Cree to be on his event. Cree said, no incense. Here she go throwing shade. Okay? The shade being thrown, but you're upset about Brianna talking about you. Like, come on, Cree. Like, it's fair game. You can't throw stuff out and don't expect nobody to hit your back with it. Okay? Tanise and Aaliyah meet at a boutique to try on stuff. They talk about Eric and his gambling. We find out that Eric goes out to gamble Monday through Friday and comes in at 4 or 5 a.m. Girl, you good because it couldn't have been me, okay? Aaliyah feels like it's Eric money, so she has no say. Listen, y'all are one. That's your household, and if it's affecting your household, you need to speak up, okay? <clears throat> Aaliyah's resolution is to go on a shopping spree. I guess that'll make her feel better, okay? They talk about giving more, they talk about having more children. Tanise feels like the men should snip it since they carry the babies. Aaliyah said, you better do it before you move to L.A. And Tanise is completely oblivious. And Aaliyah said, y'all buying a house, right? Tanise said, what are you talking about? Aaliyah lets her know that Eric told her that JoJo put an orphan in on a house. And Tanise said she is living. And I don't blame her. So they show a short scene of Sam and his snow cone truck. He feels like he can make this work and be able to provide for his family and his children. Listen, I ain't mad at that. It was a quick scene and nothing else to talk about. I think he talked about how much money he made in just a couple of hours, but that was that on that scene. Then we go to Tanise and JoJo's house where JoJo comes in. This is just all look stage, but anyway, JoJo comes in and... They had small talk, and Tanise was letting her know that, did you put an offer in on the house? Like, why didn't you tell me? She said, the main thing that's is, is that she's terrified to move to L.A. It's like they got to uplift their family and move to L.A., where they don't really have the support like they have in New York. And I can understand that, too. And then I think JoJo said that she said, well, if we're going to do new things, we got to try new things, something to that effect. But listen, y'all a young family. If y'all got it like that financially to move, do it. I don't know if I would have jump in and buy a house because that's a big responsibility or a long-term responsibility. I mean, you can sell it, but you still got to live in it for at least five years. But anyway, we get to Brianna's event, which is called Brianna's Gauntlet. Vanessa comes in. She announces that she has to leave early because her, her nanny has COVID. And in my head, my eyes is rolling because I'm like, she was looking for a way to get out. And I ain't saying that that ain't happened, but she got out of it. Cree was like, you're leaving me, Vanessa. Cree was acting stink and not participating in Bri Brianna's game. Um, I can't stand party poopers. Like, you there. Just enjoy yourself. She already came in with an attitude. Like, anyway, she should have participated in the games. Brianna extended an olive branch, but you stuck on whatever it is you stuck on. Brianna's question take Brianna questions have them take a shot and the question was, take a shot if you are in other people's family business. And Cree was like, everybody should take a shot. But she was the main one that didn't take a shot. So they show a flashback to when Cree um, put her two cents in between Shakoya and Angela's beef, which was really no beef, but put herself into it. But she ain't had nothing to do with it. So anyway, TT asks about the skate party. Shakoya brings up that Lazy Bone showed up uninvited, and Shakoya explains that her issue is with her mom still being married and moving on. 
Shakoya feels that it should be a clean break for all parties. She feels like her mom should get a divorce and then she should move on. And it'll be better for all parties involved. And I could say I agree, but it all it doesn't always work like that in life. Like stuff happens. Anyway, Cree butts in and say, make it make sense. Did your mother have a problem when you had a baby out of wedlock? For me, it's the dig, okay? It's the dig she taking and the way she's delivering is the problem. Like, she definitely could have said that a different way to make Cree understand. Like, you know, things happen in life. But, you know, Cree coming off is the mean girl. I mean, really. So, Brianna asks, what's the issue? Brianna goes out to talk to Cree because they didn't want to feel like they was ganging up on her. Cree calls all of them fake at fake A bitches while Aaliyah, look at me, trying to edit myself and still say bitches. Anyway, <laughs> while Aaliyah stands around looking like she just smoked something and wasn't really paying Cree any mind. She, she was giving the weirdest look. But anyway, Brianna's thing is she felt misunderstood when she first came into the group and could not relate to the other ladies. Cree said it's not about relating to the ladies. It's about people's energy. Cree said she came in with Vanessa and they said they were going to be on positive energy. So she says, Cree says once Vanessa leaves, it's all about Cree and what Cree is saying. And that's a whole lie. Like you, you playing yourself right now. You made it all about you. Brianna said that it's like, it's not about you, Cree. Like the show is not about you. Cree gives, you know, that she needs camera time to me and a storyline. She also gives me, I'm better than all of these women. I would never, but wait until your stuff comes out and on Front Street. Let's see how you respond. Because no one is perfect. So to me, Brianna handled that well. She tried to bring her to a place where she put herself in a situation. When I first came into the group, you know, everything I said was taken the wrong way. Bri Cree did not understand that. Like, Brianna couldn't say nothing right. So at this point... Cree says, well, I'm here, we talk, and I got to talk. So, Brianna was like, well, did you want to be here? She said, well, I came with Vanessa. Brianna was like, cool, I'm not inviting you to nothing else. And then she walks away, and that, and then, what's his name, Eric's wife walk away. And that was the end of the scene. Like, I don't know, Cree, you're not coming off looking good in this. You, matter of fact, you ain't come off looking good in none of the episodes you joined. Because you, I feel like you feel like you're better than everybody. Except for the Simmons, because I don't feel like you'll come at them that way. But anyway, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. Everything I said is in my opinion and for entertainment purposes only. I really appreciate my new subscribers. Y'all don't even understand that I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Peace.